Hey guys, welcome back to the Cod, Cod Barn Aminium. And uh, as you can see, we have a cob floor in. It is our kind of subfloor. We decided not to do a cover coat on it or, you know, our last coat on it because we really weren't getting enough drying time before we were available to put it down. So we gave it plenty of time to dry and uh, we're starting to prep it for the next layer. Um, Simon, as any of y'all might know, is out in California. So we will just let it dry. Uh, he'll probably come down and uh, come back and put the plaster coat on for us. And uh, for now, we can set the cabinet height and do all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to take a look at the floor, um, show you all what we experienced uh, based upon how deep we laid cob and uh, the kind of mix we were using. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So what you can see over here is, I hope you can see, yeah. So we laid cob at a, at a depth of up to three and a half or four inches in certain spots. Um, we already had a three or four inch tamped caliche surface uh, with lime on top and it was stabilized to something similar to concrete. And uh, so we had a really good base and this is the next base under our plaster coat. So that's why we chose to do it so thick. You can see some chicken feet here. Um, we're not necessary. We don't really necessarily care about what the condition of this side of it is because there will be a better coat going on top. But we did get some cracking. Um, not too far. There's not like a ten foot crack or, or like two pieces of our floor didn't separate. But we did get some, and that's because we laid it so wet and. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say so wet. Some people are probably pouring it on. But I've seen some dry tamping. Here's some uh, cat paws. Cat prints. Uh, some people are laying it on really dry. So we had a medium wet batch. And we also put it thick in some areas. The next coat's only going to be about a half an inch thick max. So we, we won't see that kind of cracking. But... Uh, one thing that I traditionally do on surfaces is I wet it down, at least just wet it down, and tamp it with, uh, right now I have an 8 inch by 8 inch hand tamp. You can see it over there on the floor. I don't know, I think it weighs 30 pounds or something like that. And uh, y'all have seen me do a lime coat on the floor and tamping. I mean, man, that works great. I did not choose to do that on the the floor. I was not choosing to do it because I hadn't seen it done a lot. I had seen some tamping or some rolling to kind of tamp everything down, but I was really just going to come by with some extra material and fill in all the cracks and, you know, and just put another layer and harden it with boil linseed oil. So, my wife suggested that I try it, tamping, that is, or she thought I was going to. So, I did a test batch. Um, let's go look kind of where I had tested. This is a part of the floor that had been really dry. It was almost dry enough to start walking on. So, let's see if you can see. Maybe not. I don't know what you can see through this camera. Um... But this floor here, um, I came through and I had walked along it to try to compress it. And then uh, you can see where I stopped here. Uh, I walked along it to try to compress it, see what I was going to do. I was trying to do wood or something. This was basically going to be under our bed. Um, cause I, so I wanted it a really, really hard surface right there because of the bed posts. And I know furniture can really damage it an earthen floor so uh it, it worked well one thing i was worrying about is maybe drying out the surface too much because how you're tamping it and then you're coming into contact with the, the tamp and maybe you're causing a little bit more uh evaporation at that point um 
So I was worried about extra surface cracking. I didn't see any. And it uh, appears to be a really, really hard surface. Uh, let's do another one. You can see this. I mean, you could possibly see it. I don't know. But uh, this surface has been tamped. And uh, so has the bathroom. Uh, the bathroom, <laughs> that kind of has a weird texture to it, if that comes out in the video. Um, and the texture is from things building up on the tamp. Traditionally, I always take that stuff off. I just take a putty knife and scrape the tamp. But there's little bits of uh, clay and rocks and stuff built up on the surface of the tamp. Kind of gave it like a moon rock, almost like surface of a desert kind of texture. So it kind of worked as it built up. I just needed to make sure I spread it around and did an odd pattern. So as the texture changed, it wouldn't look too bad. Uh, the next plan is most likely boil really, really high grade boiled linseed oil. Uh, to go over the next coat, shellac is proving to just be a little too soft. It's fine on the walls. I mean, I guess as long as we're not climbing on them or kicking them or, or whatever could happen. I know one wall we were thinking about on the outside, maybe doing a rock wall for the kids. I'd probably do boil linseed oil for that. Uh, not the store-bought stuff. Myself and, you know, Facebook and uh, Instagram or Cob Warrior. He uh, does a lot of research on that, and there's some pretty bad stuff in your uh, like Home Depot box store type of boil linseed oil that you really don't want on there. But if you buy a nice high grade one, it goes down with like orange oil solvents and something very natural, pine tars and stuff like that, or terpenes. So um, it's a much better mixture, and it didn't have all the cobalt and heavy metals that the store bought one does. So. Um, we're going to give you more updates, but for now, this is the floor. It's working out really well, and uh, I guess we'll talk about the uh, plaster coat when it goes down. Thanks for watching again, guys. Like, share, and subscribe, and all those kind of great things. Thanks. Have a great day.